mercy you pulled me in when i had given up you never quit when i couldn't trust you you proved me wrong when i was a stranger you brought me home when i couldn't reach you you pulled me in when i Not for. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Why is it important to be here today? Because what we're going to do is I look at some scripture passages, one from Jesus, one from Paul, about what is so significant about relationships. Now, I, we get redundant around here. I've turned myself in right now because the important stuff we just don't want to let go of. And one of the things coming on today in John chapter 17 is the important issue of how we connect to one another as Christians and how God wants to use those relationships to send a message uh, that we are connected with him. So we're going to look at relationships. We are happier here. If it's your first time, um, welcome. If you're a regular visitor, you know, let us know you're here, if you're comfortable with that. If you're a first-time visitor, we'd love to have that too by just pressing like, or uh, you can write something down uh, below. Uh, we just like to get an idea of who's out there. Some of you we're getting to know on a regular basis. Okay, but we just don't want to end it right here. Before we jump into this relationship issue from scriptures, I want to let you know that our digital ministry goes on with uh, prayer encouragements. We have our prayer team that's out there. I think over 700 people throughout the world today who are offering their time to put whatever issues you might bring up, whatever I'm thinking about what I want to bring up for the prayer group. Um, but you can do that, and you can also become a part of the prayer partner ministry. Also, we want to let you know on our website, there are things for children in our, our kids' corner. There is also what we call For the Curious, three-minute videos that get sent out every uh, twice a week on different topics that have to do with this life and how Christianity connects and what God wants to do with our lives. So anyway, let's get going. We're glad you're here. May God and the power of the Holy Spirit bless me right now and bless you. Because yeah, I, get, I can get blessed by doing these just by myself, you know, when you teach it. But trying to get a grip on what God wants to say to us about relationships. Okay, now, sometimes you know, I start off with what we call person identification. I don't have that. <laughs> it's kind of a guessing thing, but I do have a quiz that I want to start us off here today because on May 29th, this coming Sunday, the world's smallest surviving baby, which was a girl, was discharged from Sharp Mary Birch Hospital in San Diego. You know, maybe some of you are from San Diego. Um, but anyway, just to try to take a guess on what did this baby weigh, okay? Was it A, 8.6 ounces? Was it B, 15.2 ounces? Was it C, 1 pound 2 ounces? Was it D, 1 pound 8 ounces? What do you think it was? Okay, 
I could give you a clue. No, not on this, but I was 10.4, which I hear is the big side of the babies. Okay, so here's the question answered is 8.6 ounces this baby was born. Now, what do we know? It says that the baby's name, you know, you get into all kinds of uh, 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 confidentiality, HEPA things here. Uh, but baby Sabi went home uh, at five pounds after five months after birth. So it didn't, it's not like you, here's a little eight and a half ounce baby to go home. No, this baby Sabi was uh, in that hospital for five months. Boy, the bills must have been atrocious. Uh, for this preemie to come into the world. Now, we estimate, trying to figure it out, we have something in America, if you're watching from another country called HIPAA, which is a confidentiality, you just can't put it out there, uh, this baby's name, except for maybe this, I wonder, it may not even be the real name, Sabi, but we believe it is. Th this baby should be about two and a half years old today, as we are here in 2022. What do we know about baby Sabi? I think that it can be deduced from anybody watching here today that this baby and the quality of this baby's life will come down to how well she is able to relate to other people. How she is able to be connected. Because bottom line of life is, now I'm going to put out a, a one here that I believe this is what it is, and that the bottom line of life is that we we're made for relationships. It's the way that God has constructed us. And what we see in the text today is we see God talking to how he wants to use our relationships. Now, we didn't really have a text here today, uh, one specific, because we're going to go jump around in a few of them, like I said, from uh, Jesus to St. Paul. But what does God want to do with our connection with each other? Now, specifically as Christians, if you're not in the Christian camp um, yet, or you just want to check it out, we're glad that you're here. Um, but we just want to look at here, what does God want to do with Christians and their relationship? God wants to say something to the world through that unity, through our relationships. Okay? So this is a prayer in John chapter 17, verse 23. And it's, it's a bit longer. We just sliced a piece out of it. And Jesus here is praying for the disciples. But interesting in this passage also, he's saying, I'm not just praying for the disciples, but I'm praying for those who will believe in their message. You know, that might be you, or you may be saying, ah, I don't know yet. I, I'm not so sure about this. And I, I think that's healthy. I think it's healthy to ask questions and not just jump into things. But, uh, you know, and if you are firmly in the Christian group uh, camp, believing Jesus Christ is the uh, your salvation and how you've been brought into the family of God, uh, what does he want to say to all of us as we relate to one another? I and them and you and me, that they may perfect, be perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Okay, so there's this unity, this oneness. And I, I would say again, that we as human beings were made to be connected with each other. But not everybody gets it. And I think that nobody gets it perfectly. It's really relationships are approximated because we have a problem of which something that turns us away from each other. And we're going to get into that in point two. Uh, but you get it more and less. I would say to you that the way that it comes out at its best is interdependence. And again, we will move right into this in point number two. But some people long for it. They long to be connected. And some of us get hurt because our need for relationships makes us very vulnerable. Um, it's about connecting. It's about trust. And as I said before, us as humans, we, we struggle. We go back and forth. We, we belong, meant to belong to each other, but we also are individuals. And these often collide and people get hurt. And sometimes when people get hurt with this, they shut down emotionally. They don't let people get close. They don't want to get hurt. They don't want to get back on that horse that bucked them off and really popped it to them in a good, in a, in a 
uh, not a good way, but a hurtful way. But it doesn't take away, and I'm going to put this out there, our core need for connection. And it doesn't matter if you would classify yourself as an introvert or an extrovert. We are made to be connected. Okay? Now, we could stop here and say, get good relationships. Make that your priority of your life. You got to make it work. You got to make it happen. It's right here in front of you on this scripture passage. But what God wants to do is give us the capacity to do this. A capacity to connect with one another. Okay, so there's a couple issues that are involved here. One is that we would grow in our love for one another by staying connected and having good relationships in our life. And number two, this one might be off into the corner, God wants to show the world something through us. Now, I back off a little bit on this because I tell you, most of my life is saying, don't put your ultimate trust in anything but God. And there's some truth to that. And, the, you know, when we go back to people who've gotten hurt, people have put in their trust, whether they put their trust into a church they put their trust in another human being. They put their trust in their uh, relationships with their children, the close family. They put their trust in business relationships, and they've been burned. Okay? We know that we are not consistent as human beings. But still, I will go back to the key point that is set out here in Scripture. God wants to say something to the world through Christians and their relationships. Now, on the other side of this, there can be some problems. And again, we're going to go right into the problems here with point number two. Problems of what kinds of messages does the church send, we as believers, to the world. And sometimes they're not good. And sometimes we get criticized. And sometimes those criticisms are very legitimate. But I would say overall that what the world needs to know is there's a loving, forgiving God. What the world does not need is excuses from us and blaming. And um, they need um, us to be honest with ourselves and look to the God who loves us in spite of our failures. In spite of our failures in relationships. But let's get real here and look at what does God put into our minds as the perfect view of relationships and how can we miss that? We call this part of the message the malady. We can miss the unity by missing differences. So there's a unity issue here. We are uh, one but we are many and through those there's a unity. Unity comes by respecting differences but when we miss differences it doesn't work out. Now God wants to put a picture in our mind here from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We are created at best with relationships to be interdependent. God does not give the whole truth of who we are as human beings to one person. We have gifts, we have understandings, we are at different places in our faith life, but there's something in us that can deceive us and tell us that we have all the truth. We have total understanding. And we can deceive ourselves by saying, I only want to be with people like me, you know? It's like uh, people that say to feet people, I just want to be around people, feet people. Um, hand people, I, and I'm a hand person, I just want to be around hand people because those other people, they get on my nerves. I don't, I don't want nothing. I don't need them. I don't want to be around them. Life is better with just people who are like me. This is not how we are designed. And this is where the self-deception can come. The self-deception can come in when we believe that our part has the whole truth. I don't know where you are in the world today, but, I, uh, but in the United States, we struggle with this a lot in politics, you know? Both sides believe they have the true understanding of who we are and how we're meant to live. They don't understand the strengths and the weaknesses always. They only look at themselves. This can happen in the church too. 
And then so we began to get groupish. Hands together, feet together. And then there is the they. They who are messed up. They who don't get it. Now, the text here is really saying to us is that we are different, but we at the same time are one. Life at its best, as God intended it to be, is meant to be interdependent. To learn to have gratitude for differences. To learn to understand people who are different. To learn to understand why people who are not like us and people who don't think like us are important. Now, I just want to hold on here. There are some things that we would not want to say, well, they're just different. Okay, um, I tend to be more honest and they tend to be lying. Well, there's differences and they are going to do their lying thing. I'm going to do my honest thing. And who am I to say? Well, no, there are some things that are universally wrong. And we need to call those out as people are able to hear us call those things out. Interdependence here has more to do of getting to a place in your life where you understand not everybody's like you. I would say when you really are starting to get this right in your life, you get to a place where you're glad not everybody's like you. We need people who see from this perspective and people who see things from this perspective. And what God would do is take all those perspectives and put them as a part of the whole. And he describes this again, well, St. Paul does, as a body, okay? Now, how do you get there? I'm going to say again to you that the issue is that we never get there totally and completely. At best, humans, we can approximate the best quality of relationships and the best quality of relationships for a church. Now, for me as a pastor in this church, in this place, St. Matthew Lutheran and uh, Sonora, California, this is a great, highly important to me. This is church health because what don't I want? I don't want to be about a church as a big bummer, but we'll never be perfect. We have confession and absolution here. We have the law that continues to accuse us. But how far can it go? And how do you get there? How do you take it to the next level? Well, it really has to do with our relationship with God. We go, grow strong in unity by God's love. The more that God is at work in the hearts of us, of his people, the more we are able to be set free from this view of life that only we understand and we are able to see others and have discernment for other parts of the body of Christ, learning to have gratitude, appreciation, love, love that builds up the parts. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So what God wants to do is to love us. Because the issue of life is, the more of this love that you have that binds us together, the more you can give. And of course, we, we go back to what we said before, we are all limited in this. But the good news is, is that the more of the love that God continues to reveal to us through Christ Jesus, that we are loved and we are forgiven, that our life and our sense of self-worth does not come down to our performance and what we do. It comes down to what Christ has done for us, that Christ has loved us perfectly, that Christ has made that difference by giving us his grace. So as we go through life, we walk with God. We see our failures in relationship, relationship with God, relationship with one another. And God shows us his grace. And what happened? The more love we get, the least desire we have to judge other parts. Not just to judge other parts and who they are, but to judge people and where they're at. 
You know, again, we are all messed up to some extent. But what love can do, it does the same thing that God does in our life. It doesn't condemn us. It doesn't criticize us. It doesn't find people to say, aren't they stupid? No, it comes alongside. It walks with them. It helps other parts grow. Grow through their pain. Grow through their struggles. And yes, at times, as that love goes out and out and out, it gets us to a place of being able to speak the truth in love. You know? It's probably something else that was never talked about much, is speak the truth in law. You know? You're messed up. You need to change. Well, you can do that to some extent, probably without the finger, as you've shown love to other people, as they trust you. They know that you have their best interest in their, at, at heart here. And what does God want to say through all of this? He wants us to know that he wants to send a message to the world from our relationships with one another. He wants to send a message that people will know the love that these people have for each other. The care that is there that meets people where they're at without judging, without criticizing, without putting people down, without guilting and shaming. When all of that goes away and there is that love for a brother and a sister and the world sees it, there is something out there that God, I believe, has put in the psyche of all people of knowing this comes from the one who gave us this world and this life. That's what God wants to do, is to send a message. Now, again, I, I think that if you take this stuff and you say, oh my gosh, I got to get it together with relationships in my life because um, the, the truth of who God is and Jesus is all looking towards me, I would say to you, just calm down. It's the greatest message you could send to the world out there is not, again, about what we do and our performance and getting relationships at their highest level, which I strive for that. I want that. It's, it's nourishing. It is the most valuable thing on the earth is how we connect with others. But really, it all comes down to, again, a God who loves us, who tells us it's not about how well you can connect. It's about my love and forgiveness. But at the same time, he would say, Get up and make it happen. Be more loving. Be more forgiving. Get into more of the growth of people. Get out of judgment. Get out of finger pointing. Get out of criticism. Get out of put downs. Get out of gossip. Get into loving and building up others in the name of Jesus Christ. Send a message to this world through your life that God is real. And let the Holy Spirit take it from there. Amen. I hope you get this, and I hope I get more and more of this, to find that community of God's people to walk with. Okay. Let's move forward with the prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, all the gifts you give us, the resources we need in this life, the air that we breathe, they're all good gifts. This gift is huge. The gift of love for one another. The gift of unity, being one. The gift of respecting differences. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to empower us to have these best of relationships, to be a part of healing and hope in this world that's hurting. And dear Heavenly Father, also in a world that uh, needs healing and hope, we think of what has happened in the United States and in Texas. We think of all of those who lost their children, their grandchildren. We think of the families. We think of the husbands and wives that have been left behind. Father, we pray for your peace and restoration. We pray for the marriages, um, that that unity that is there would not be broken through this deep crisis. Father, send your Holy Spirit to these people in Texas and provide restoration and healing and new life. And dear Heavenly Father, again, we bring before you the people of the Netherlands and um, that as we send out digital messages, 
about your great love, the love that you love the disciples with, as spoken about today in John 17, um, that the people in the Netherlands, the Dutch people, would know that you have a great love for them, their nation, all nations of the world, really. So, Father, we trust the messages on however you want to use them with your Holy Spirit. And dear Heavenly Father, we bring before you those who struggle with um, health issues that are closer to the congregation here, as well as those who are part of our prayer partner um, ministry. We think of Judy Fisher, and we think of Sherry Bradley, Benjamin Paul, Charlotte Tucker, Robbie Combs, John Martin, and Jerry Siebert. Father, watch over them. Bless them. Give them healing where it be your will. And Father, also for our online community and the prayers that have come in. Um, Father, hear the prayers of our prayer team. And let those who are being prayed for see your hand at work. Into your hands do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. Okay. Uh, it's offering time. Um, we usually pass the plate. Well, actually, we don't pass the plates anymore. But I just want to say to you that what, if you would like to give, first off, I'd like to say, if you have your home church, make sure that you give to your home church. Um, it's important to support what God is doing throughout the United States, throughout the world, through church community. If you don't have a church uh, home and you would like to give to St. Matthew, you can go on to our website on stmatthewchurchsonora.org and there uh, you can give on PayPal. We just got our PayPal account set up. If you would like to make a donation, we'd appreciate that. I just want to encourage you not to give to the church, to the online, but give from your heart. Give from your heart because you believe in God. Okay? We all have a life to live. God always puts before us the big issues. I think that is done here today with John chapter 17, with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. May God bless you with great relationships on your life journey. And I say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, give you and your life his peace. Thank you for being here with us again. Uh, if you feel this issue on relationships could help some of your friends, you want to share this message. We know not everybody is open, but sometimes we're surprised. Uh, you can do that. Uh, and I want to encourage you again to watch for our digital messages that go out. And we hope that you're blessed. We hope that you found this helpful today. And God's blessings be with you always. Take care, everybody.